Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So this is going to be the third video in my Pygame programming series. And in this video, I'm going to be going over character animation. So on my last video, someone did comment saying that they wanted to see some character animation. And obviously I was uh, going to incorporate that into the tutorials, but I am bringing it in a little bit earlier than we usually would. So obviously, uh, if you remember from the last tutorial, so I'll pull up what we had so far. We had a little red square and he was able to move around the screen, but when he got to the edges, he'd be stopped. And if you click space, he'd do a little jump like that. Uh, now this is really basic. It doesn't really look very good. Uh, it's just kind of cool because you can move him around, but obviously we want to make something that looks better and uses a real character and real sprites. Now, full disclosure, I did not make any of these sprites. I simply just went on Google images and downloaded a sprite sheet and I'll show you what they look like here. If you guys would like to use other sprites and you don't want to use this character, uh, that's completely fine. You can find your own sprites. Just make sure that they are the same size. So these are 64 by 64 and that you have nine images for each of them. I'm sure you can probably figure out how to make it work with uh, different images or different size images, but this tutorial is only going to work with these specific sprites. I hope that makes sense. So pretty much all these images that you're seeing right here, I'm going to leave a link to download them down below in the description. You just have to click on that link and you can go to my GitHub where you'll be able to download, first of all, this file, if you want that, that we're going to be working on today, the background image, and then all these sprites. Okay, so let's get on with the video. So also another uh, important thing is before we start, we actually need to make a new folder. So before, if your game was on your desktop, you need to move it into a folder. I just called mine game. And then all the images you're going to put in that folder with your uh, file like this, just so they're all in the same directory. You could put all the images on your desktop if you want. Um, as long as everything's in the same directory, this will work. Okay, so let's get into the code then. So this is what we had last time. Um, we're just pretty much just basically moving around and jumping. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to delete a few things. And this is just because I realized when I was making the first tutorial that we're kind of going to move into a platform game a little bit just to show you we might do some other types of games uh, but we're going to get rid of the ability to move up and down with your character uh, so the only way we're going to be able to move up and down is by jumping so we're just going to delete that line right there that I deleted so we can no longer move our character up and down by just clicking the up and down arrow keys okay and now we're going to need to set some variables so pretty much what we need to do when we are moving our character is we need to keep track of First of all, what direction is our character moving? Are they moving? And how many steps have they already moved? Now, this is important because we need to know what frame or what picture we're going to be showing on the screen uh, so that we can display it accurately. So we're going to start with our first variable, which is going to be called left. We're going to set that equal to false. And then we're going to do right. We're going to set that equal to false as well. And then we're going to do walk count. And we're going to set that equal to zero. Now, this is a kind of tedious part here. When we want to load an image into Pygame, it's very simple, but if you want to load a lot of images, it kind of is tedious. So I already have the code to load these images in. I'm going to put it down in the description below to save you guys some time. Uh, feel free to type it if you'd like, but pretty much just I'm just going to paste this in here and you guys can go down in the description right now. Just pause the video quickly. And all of this here is going to be there. Just simply copy it and paste it. And now I'm going to go over what this code really does. So pretty much we start by making two lists. So we have the walk right list and the walk left list. Now it is noted that since these sprites are pretty well identical, just flipped from moving right to left, we could just flip the pie game image uh, if they're going to be moving left. But I just figured this would be easier for the tutorial. So we just have two lists. So pretty much if we want to load an image in, we just start by typing pygame.image.load like this, and then the file name and the extension. And this is all in quotation marks like this. Now, say for example, your file is in a different directory, um, then we have to do something called pygame.path.join. I believe that's what you do. Something around something along those lines. You can look it up if you guys want. So say you want to put all your images into a folder. Wow, I really can't type, can I? Um, then what you do is you use pygame.path.join, and then in here you're gonna put the folder. So for example, you'd put like uh, data or something like that, and then it would join that in. You could also just simply type it out. Um, but if you get rid of this pygame.path.join here. 
then you can do like I don't know picks slash r1 like that and it should load your file in so say you want to put them all in a folder then you just have to add this to the beginning of all the lines I hope that makes sense it's not really important for this video I just figured I'd show you guys all right and then we have our background image here which we're gonna replace with that black background it's just a really basic like grass kind of thing I just got it because I wanted something other than black as a background and then we have our basic standing sprite right here image which is just gonna be our still image so when the character is not moving or when they're jumping it's gonna show this okay I hope that makes sense for you guys now we also need to change this width and this height uh, variable here so since the width of our sprite is gonna be 64 and the height's gonna be 64 we're gonna change that to this now you notice the hitbox on the sprite is gonna be slightly larger than the actual sprite uh, don't worry about that we can figure that out in another video okay so now another thing we need to do down here uh, is we're going to get rid of some code here to just kind of clean things up. So pretty much whenever you're doing making a pie game, uh, you really want to have all your drawing done in one area. So it's not a good idea, especially if we're going to be drawing a lot of different objects, to be drawing them inside of what we call the main loop. So pretty much the main loop is our main while loop, which is constantly running. And as soon as we exit that loop, the game ends. So inside of our main loop here, we don't want to be drawing anything. So we're going to copy this or cut this and we're going to put it into a function. Now, again, if you guys don't understand a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about here in terms of Python, I do recommend you go back and watch my previous videos. Um, just my Python programming tutorials, maybe if you know a bit, skip to like 11 or 12 um, where it starts getting into more complex stuff just because it is kind of a prerequisite and I don't want to go over how all these things work uh, in terms of just basic coding. So we're going to create a function called redraw game window and it's going to do exactly what it says. It's just going to redraw the game window. So in here, we're going to, well, actually we're not going to fill the window, but I'll go over that in a second. So the first thing we want to do in here is we're actually going to type global uh, and then we're going to global the variable walk count. And this is just because we're going to be changing this variable. So we need to global it at the top here. If you don't know what this means, don't worry about it. Pretty much it just allows us to, uh, take this variable and make it a global variable because if we were to redefine it in here then it would be an instance of the variable inside this function and it wouldn't be seen outside of it um okay so now instead of filling the screen with a color we're actually going to fill it with a picture so whenever we want to put a picture on the screen in pi game it's pretty easy you just type win.blit and then you're going to put the name of the picture so since we stored our background picture in bg we're going to do bg you do a comma and then a tuple with the position where you want to store it or where you want to place it so in this case we're just going to place our background in zero zero and yeah now right now we're currently drawing a rectangle to the screen so we're going to change that in a second to be the character uh to be the picture of the character okay so now the thing is though since we took this drawing code out of our main loop we have to make sure we call our function you can call this at the beginning or the end of the main loop. I just like to call it at the end. So simply redraw game window, two brackets. And now whenever we want to change anything in terms of drawing, we're only going to do it in here. So we're not going to draw anything in this loop. We're only going to draw it in this redraw game window right here. All right. So now we have to get into actually animating the character because if I run the program right now, pretty much nothing has changed except we have a background. Uh, so when we're moving left, what we have to say is now we have to make our left variable equal to true and our right variable equal to false. This is just so we don't confuse the program. We don't have right and left being true. Um, so yeah, now if we're moving right, we're going to have to set our right variable equal to true and our left variable equal to false. And if we're jumping, actually we can leave them true or false. But now if we're not doing anything else, we're going to have to set them equal to false. So pretty much we're going to make this an elif now like that. And then at the bottom here, we're going to put an else and we're just going to set them both equal to false. And we're going to change our walk count, which I'll show you in a second to zero. So right left equals false and our walk count, which is going to count how many steps we've had pretty much is going to be equal to zero. Okay. So I know it might seem kind of confusing right now. Don't worry. I'm going to get into why we're doing all this stuff. Right? Uh, and yeah. Okay. So now that we know when we're moving right, when we're moving left, etc. Actually, sorry. One sec. We have to change in here as well. 
just so that once we click the space bar, we're no longer moving left and right. It's going to look weird on the screen if you see that. And walk count equals zero. Okay, so now that we know whether we're moving left or right or we're standing still, uh, we need to use that information to draw our character onto the screen. So to do that, we're going to go inside of this uh, redraw game window here. And we're going to get rid of this draw rectangle because we're no longer going to be drawing a rectangle. We're going to be drawing an image. And we're simply going to start by typing uh, if walk count is greater than or sorry, plus one is greater than 27. Actually greater than or equal to we'll do that. Then we are going to set walk count to zero. Now the reason we're doing this is uh, you'll see in the next thing. If we were to try to have our walk count go greater than 27, uh, we're gonna run out of we're gonna run into an index error in here because we have nine sprites and I'm planning on displaying each sprite for three frames and we're gonna have a frame rate which I'm gonna change of 27 frames per second. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now we're gonna do another if statement. We're gonna say if left. This means we're moving left. Then we're gonna want to draw our character left. So we're gonna do win. Dot lit. Again, this is how you draw all your images in Pygame. We're going to use our walk left list that I created up here. And now we're going to index the correct image. So to do that, we're going to have to use our walk count variable like this. But instead of just writing walk count, we're actually going to integer divide it by three. Now what integer division does is it just excludes uh, all the remainder, all the decimals. So if you had one divided by three, for example, or integer division by three, it would be zero. If you had four integer division three, it would be one. Uh, pretty straightforward. And we're gonna increment our walk count variable. So plus equals one, like so. Now we're gonna do an elif. So if we're moving right, we're going to split to the screen our walk right list with our walk count variable, like so. And we'll do walk count plus equal one. And if we are not moving right or we are not moving left, we must be standing still or jumping. So in that case, we are just going to blit our character. Now I noticed I forgot to put the tuples in, so I will do that now. We're still gonna keep using our X and Y variable that we did in the first uh, tutorial for moving, just because this is gonna keep track of where our character is and it's still gonna work uh, even though we're not drawing that rectangle. And then we update the screen and yeah, that should be working. Now I'm just gonna go through here uh, and just make sure that I did everything correctly. I don't wanna have to look through this after. Yeah, so there's actually one more thing I think we need to change. Oh wait, no, that might be good. Okay, so now uh, we actually need to do the, the frame rate, sorry. So I didn't go over this at the beginning, but pretty much frame rate is how many frames or how many images you see per second. So in every game, uh, for example, all the shooting games, most of them run in like 60 FPS which means you have 60 pictures every second. And that's pretty much how videos work. If you don't, if you don't know, it shows a series of images uh, very quickly so that it seems like they are moving, but in reality, it's just a ton of different pictures running at a frames per second. So in our game, we're gonna do 27 frames per second just cause that's how many sprites I have. I know it's a weird FPS, but that's just what we're gonna use. So now we need to define something called a clock variable or like a clock speed in Pygame. So we're gonna do clock equals pygame dot time dot clock like that. Now this is simply gonna allow us to change our FPS in the game. Now we're just gonna do clock dot tick and then 27. And that's just gonna set our FPS to 27. Now let's try running the program and see if everything's working. So you can see we have our little character here and he moves around the screen like this. Now, just ignore the fact that you see his little feet all over there. It's just because the background's not big enough, so it's not drawing. You can see when he jumps, he jumps up like that. And that is the character animation. So if we want to fix this little thing down here, the issue is just that our background's not big enough. So we're not actually drawing over the feet of the character. So we're just going to change the height of the screen here to 480. We're gonna change our character's position to 400. And now everything should be working. Yep, so now you can see our characters here. He moves around the screen like so, and he can jump, and everything looks pretty good.
So yeah, that has been the third tutorial in my Pi game series. In the next one, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do, but we're probably going to get into object collision. So for example, right now, this guy, he can't go off the screen because he's colliding with the walls. But what if we were to have a block in the middle of the room? Well, we wouldn't want him to be able to go over that and maybe jumping on top of the block. And yeah, so if you guys enjoy the series and you want to see the rest of the videos, please help me out by leaving a like and subscribing. And if you have any questions or anything that you want to see in other tutorials or other videos, let me know in the comments down below.